What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be making a lasagna. Keto style that is. Okay, so for this lasagna we're going to be working with some of these ingredients on the table right here. We've got about a pound and a half of ground beef, 7327. We've got tw uh, two cloves of garlic, 100 grams of onion, one cup of sliced mushrooms. We're going to be using about a quarter of this block of Galbani mozzarella cheese. Um, so it's going to be about a quarter of a block. We're going to be using a couple tablespoons of shredded mozzarella cheese, but you can use any uh, type of shredded cheese you'd like. Or you can even leave this part out and just use just the, the whole mozzarella cheese. And for our pasta, we're going to be using a cabbage instead of our pasta noodles. Uh, we're also going to be using a small can of tomato sauce, as well as some, some Italian and oregano seasoning, and some salt and pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. We're also going to be using some whole milk ricotta cheese, as well as one egg to help bind the beef and make it all kind of stick together a little bit better. So before you get started prepping your ingredients, you're going to want to grab a nice big pot that holds about 8 to 10 cups of water, and you're going to want to get that boiling on the stove so that we can boil the cabbage. So I went ahead and started this already, got my pot boiling and got some water heating up. Alright, so once you get your oven preheating and your water boiling, you're going to want to start peeling off some of the leaves of the cabbage. So the best thing to do is to kind of cut along the bottom of the cabbage to loosen up the leaves and just try to peel them off as carefully as possible. I went ahead and already did this to save myself some time. And so I got a bunch of my leaves of, of cabbage ready to get boiled. So one more thing to note about this. Don't beat yourself up if you end up tearing your, your cabbage leaves and whatnot. It's kind of a, a best practice thing. No matter what, it's going to turn out good, and there's a lot more forgiveness when it comes to the assembly portion than you would think. So your, your leaves don't have to come out in huge, giant pieces you know, every single time. Some of them can be torn or a little cracked like this one is. Okay, so now that our water is heated up, we're going to start putting the cabbage into the boiling pot. And we just want to try to get these as submerged as possible. We're going to close up the lid and we're going to let that go for about seven, seven to ten minutes. So I find seven to ten minutes is usually a good time frame to boil the cabbage. Um, you know, sometimes I like it a little softer or I've even had it a bit crunchier and it's, it's turned out fine both ways. So I, I don't really have a preference, but sometime in between there seems to be the, the sweet spot. Um, so depending on what you like, you know, try it out at seven minutes. See if it's got a good crunch or if you want it to be a little bit softer and, you know, leave it in a little bit longer. All right, so next we're gonna cook up our meat. So we're gonna put about a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. We're gonna dump our onions in there. And we're gonna let this cook up for about three to five minutes. Okay, so the timer just went off for the cabbage. So we're gonna check this out and carefully remove it so that we can uh, let it sit out to dry. Okay, next we're gonna add in our mushrooms. We're just gonna add a little bit more olive oil again. And we're going to toss in our 100 grams of mushrooms, I mean one cup of mushrooms. Next we're going to add our garlic. And at this point the pan's going to be pretty hot so you're going to want to kind of keep the garlic moving. We're only going to want to cook this for you know about 15 to 20 seconds or so. And then we're going to want to add our ground beef. So next go ahead and take your ground beef and add that to the mix. So right after you get your ground beef cooking on the stove, go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Alright, so while our ground beef's cooking down, we can start prepping our tomato sauce. Just want to open up the can and have that ready to go. So when it comes to ground beef choices, the preferable options are going to be 73% protein, 27% fat, or the 80-20, 80% protein, 20% fat. Um, I probably wouldn't go much higher than the 85% protein, 15% fat, because um, after that it's just going to be a little bit too high on the protein, and, um, and what you're really looking for is even a moderate amount of protein with a higher amount of fat. Um, so I try to probably stay away from the 90-10 or the 93-7 and try to stick closer to something like the 73-27 or the 80-20 ground beef. So since our ground beef is about halfway cooking, I'm going to start adding... Uh, so since the ground beef is about halfway done cooking, I'm going to start adding some seasoning. So I'm going to do a little dash of Italian seasoning and a dash of oregano along with some, some salt and pepper. So this is where you can get kind of creative with your cooking on your seasonings and spices. You know, salt and pepper are always going to be a, a general staple, but um, you know, the Italian seasonings work really well as long, along with the oregano, but basil works well, sometimes a little parsley, um, you know, some fresh herbs are really going to kick this up a notch. So keep that in mind, you know, feel free to explore and experiment a little bit. You can also just 
trying to keep it pretty plain, um, but I tend to like to add the little touch of Italian seasoning to it. Um, you know, if I had some fresh basil, I'd probably throw that in there as well. So now that our ground beef is pretty much done cooking, we're going to drop the heat on the pan and add our tomato sauce to help reduce the temperature a little bit. And after we've added our tomato sauce, go ahead and crack your egg right into the pan. We're just going to do one whole egg. You're going to want to break that up and stir it in. This is just going to help bind the meat so it stays together a little bit better in the lasagna. And be sure to start stirring that egg in immediately because otherwise it'll cook and you don't want that to happen. Okay, so now comes the fun assembly part. So to build this, we're going to be using a springform pan, uh, but you can use any sort of casserole dish or pie dish. Um, it doesn't have to be round, it can be square. Um, honestly, that might work a little bit better, but uh, we're going to be using the springform pan. And if you use one of these, um, you're going to want to be sure to put a, a tray underneath because it's going to get a little bit wet and gooey um, and it's going to seep out of the bottom. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so to build this, you're just going to want to start with your taking your biggest pieces and you're going to want to drape it over the pan, just a little bit over the edge. And try to cover the bottom as much as possible. I leave a, a little bit coming up the walls, hanging over the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't going to be any sort of Pinterest recipe. Okay, so now, now that we have our base layer down, we're just going to add some meat. All right, and after we have a layer of meat down, we're gonna just throw on some dabs of uh, ricotta cheese. So this recipe calls for about half a container of this ricotta cheese. So we're gonna be using about two cups in total. So we're just gonna wanna spread that out over two layers. And then we're gonna wanna take about four ounces or half of our eight ounce block of mozzarella cheese. We're just gonna wanna tear this up into little pieces and throw it right into your lasagna. This is where you can get a little creative too on your own. You know, beyond this, you can add whatever ingredients you want. You can add spinach to this or tomatoes to kind of make it a little more of a Florentine style. Or sometimes I like to add some olives to mine just to give it some more flavor. And now that we have all that cheese and ricotta cheese um, on top of the ground beef, we're gonna add another layer. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this big piece. And we'll lay this right over the top of everything. Just try to keep your outside pieces over the edge if possible. And we're just gonna repeat this process and add the rest of our ground beef to this next layer of the lasagna. And we're gonna follow that ground beef up with some more ricotta cheese and some more mozzarella. And finally, we're gonna add our the top to our lasagna. Let's go ahead and throw a couple pieces on the top layer. Kind of close this guy up. And if you have any, you know, of your, your outside layer, just fold it right over the top to kind of seal this in. That's good. All right, and finally, we're gonna add about a quarter cup or a small handful of cheese to the top. This will just give it a nice little kind of crispy texture um, once it once it bakes. So now we're ready to pop this guy into the oven. And we're gonna cook him up for about 40 minutes. So we're gonna check on this thing in 40 minutes and see what we're looking at, and we'll see if it needs to stay in a little bit longer. All right, so our timer just went off, so let's see how we're looking. So when this comes out of the oven, it's gonna be piping hot. You're gonna to wanna to be sure to let it sit for about at least 15 minutes, or if you're meal prepping this ahead of the time, you can stick it in your fridge, let it sit overnight, or even for just a couple hours, and that'll cause it to really firm up and hold a lot nicer, and it'll make cutting and plating a lot easier. Um, and then you can just reheat it after that. But uh, we're gonna let our sit for about 15 to 20 minutes to cool down, and then we're gonna dig in and enjoy. And depending on your oven, the top may not be as crispy or as charred as you'd like it. So you can definitely put this back in the oven, put it on broil for about two minutes, but you're gonna wanna watch it like a hawk. I had mine in for just maybe a few seconds too long, but I kind of like mine kind of crispy and crunchy on the top. I had mine in for maybe a couple seconds too long, so it came out a little crispy, but I like my top kind of charred and crispy like that. So now we're going to cut this up. So we're just going to want to open up our springform pan. Now we're just going to cut this up into eight slices. So all our hard work has finally paid off and we're ready to eat. Let's go ahead and try a bite of this. Mmm. Oh man, that is just so delicious. The ricotta, all nice and melted in there. The mo stringy mozzarella, the onions, and the ground beef. It's just perfect. 
So just a couple more quick comments about this recipe. If your ground beef comes out too greasy or too wet, you can add some grated Parmesan cheese to help thicken it or help soak up some of that grease and kind of keep things together a little bit better. Um, or you can, you may want to add a second egg. Um, in my case, I probably should have added a second egg, but instead um, I just went ahead and <clears throat> I didn't end up using all the grease that was left over in the pan. So now the part you've been waiting for, the nutrition and cost breakdown. So for the nutrition, this lasagna comes out to 37 grams of fat, 26 grams of protein, and 6 grams of carbs, which is going to be nearly perfectly proportionate for being a keto meal. The ratios are 72% fat, 23% protein, and 5% carbs. It doesn't get much better than that. So this lasagna is going to make about 8 servings. Uh, each slice is going to come out to about 450 calories, so keep that in mind when you're thinking about going for a second slice. I know I can definitely afford 900 calories for dinner, but you may have different caloric needs. So keep that in mind when you're serving up your plate. So now for the cost breakdown. The head of cabbage cost me $1. The cup of mushrooms I added cost $1. The ricotta cheese cost $2, but I used half of the container. So that's about a dollar in ricotta cheese. The fresh mozzarella that I buy costs about $6 to $6.50. So a quarter of that block of cheese, or eight ounces of that cheese, came out to about $1.63. The can of tomato sauce cost 60 cents. The pound and a half of ground beef came out to about $4.15. So for the rest of the ingredients, like a couple tablespoons of olive oil, a couple tablespoons of cheese, you know, the pinches of seasonings, or the handful of onions, I put that down for about roughly two dollars. I'm not going to calculate all those ingredients individually, but I think about two dollars worth of ingredients is, is pretty fair. So that brings the grand total of this lasagna out to about eleven dollars and fifty cents, or right under a dollar fifty, about a dollar forty two cents per serving. So definitely try this recipe as soon as possible with your family. It will be sure to blow them away. I guarantee that they will absolutely fall in love with it. For a whole whopping $12, you can feed you know, up to a family of eight or you know, maybe a little hungrier family of four. You're gonna be having two slices a piece. And that makes this a totally affordable, budget, keto-friendly option you know, on the dinner nights. So this recipe takes maybe an hour to an hour and 15 minutes from start to finish, depending on how long it takes you to step through each of the steps. Um, but a lot of that time is gonna be cook time. Um, so you're really only looking at about maybe 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes of active preparation time. It's really not that bad. And so for demonstration purposes, I just made one lasagna tonight, but I tell you what, I never make less than two at a time. Just because of all the prep that goes into it, it's a lot easier to make two or even three and have a lot of leftovers for the week or even seal these up in a bag and freeze them because these things are great reheated. You just gotta pop them in the microwave for you know a minute or two and it's gonna be just like it came out of the oven. This is a great recipe to prep ahead of the time so I will often prep two or three of these, you know, at the beginning of the week and I'll dish them up in my fit packers so that I have lunches for every day of the week and any extras I have, I'll either eat on the weekends if I'm still feeling it or I'll throw them in a plastic bag and freeze them. These things hold up really well in the freezer and, you know, after throwing them in the microwave, they come out just like they came out of the oven. So as always, you can show support for this channel by dropping a like down below, hitting the subscribe button and ringing that bell so you get notified of my upcoming videos. I'm also very interested in hearing about what type of content you would like to see in my upcoming videos. So please leave a comment down below and let me know what type of videos you'd like to see me come out with next. I'm gonna be posting videos at least once or twice a week, so be sure to keep an eye out for what's to come. I hope you all have a wonderful week and let me know what you think of that keto lasagna. I'm about to go eat mine right now.